Well, we're now going to be our next plenary, which is uh, along the theme of people again today. And it's, it's actually a really special panel, um, just a short panel, but um, it's really going to be looking at the railways and how um, uh, us as a railway community um, have been supporting the current humanitarian crisis here in Europe. Um, and so I'm going to introduce the moderator for the session, who's also my uh, colleague, Mark Gigon. Um, and he's our passenger director at the International Union of Railways. Um, and he's responsible for all of our passenger activities work, including development of our high-speed rail uh, in, uh, globally, as well as railway stations, ticket distribution, regional and commuter train tour and tourism uh, in trains. Um, but um, his, it's important that he's moderating this conversation today because he also coordinator of both our COVID-19 task force response work as well as our refugee crisis uh, task force as well that kicked off recently. So uh, welcome and thank you, Mark, and, hand, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lucy, Lucy, for this uh, nice, uh, nice introduction. Uh, and, and so, so as you said, it's a very special session here now. And uh, maybe, maybe you know, at the very beginning of the Ukrainian crisis, uh, UIC set up uh, the, uh, the refugee task force to support the population, to support the population who left Ukraine, but not only that, to support also the Ukrainian people in their country. So we have regularly one meeting concerning, concerning that. We had this morning the 10th meeting concerning the Refugee Task Force with, um, with a representative from all European countries, first Ukraine, Poland, Germany, but also from Portugal to Estonia, all the countries are in this, uh, in the, in, in this task force. There were, there were, and there were three phases of this, of this task force. So the first one uh, is that the meetings are dedicated on the ways to support uh, the Ukrainian people who left the countries. That means in the majority women, children, uh, old, um, elder people, elder persons. Uh, so, so how to give them uh, free tickets, how the free tickets can be international tickets coming from Poland to other countries, uh, until Norway, until, uh, until Spain, until other countries. And we have, we have, and you can find that in the UIC website, some guidelines, we have written some guidelines for that, for that topic. Then came uh, the huma uh, humanitarian uh, trends uh, from Europe to U Ukraine. Uh, to support the population of Ukraine, and after that, there were some also um, uh, trends for spare parts of materials in order to ensure the maintenance of railways. So, so there were a lot of companies who have given that. I have in mind uh, uh, DB, SBB, Renfe, and other other companies who gave also some some um, uh, some parts for that. So, so it is, it is uh, uh, very great, and I very thank all the well-wounded kings and infrastructure managers here uh, to, for their support and their solidarity. I'm not sure that, that the director of passenger is online from, um, from Ukrainian Railways. Do, do we have him? Uh, yes, yes, he is here. Okay, great. So, so uh, we will have, the, in the panel, we will have three persons. We will have the director of passenger, uh, <coughs> Mr. Uh, Alexander uh, Perzovsky, uh, CEO of the passenger company, uh, who, uh, who also have uh, used um, uh, help all the companies. And this morning, we had the last figures concerning the number of trends, thousands of trends. But unfortunately, there were a lot of dead people within the Ukrainian railways. That means around 150 uh, employees of UZ um, uh, died and passed away during, during this war. Uh, there, was, there is also in the panel so Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Bouchard, um, uh, who is currently responsible for physical uh, security of buildings, but also coordinating of um, the Ukrainian refugees uh, within, uh, within, within DB and from PKP, of course, because you know that PKP is uh, the most involved uh, country in that uh, crisis. Uh, there are today 6.7 million 
uh, refugees in Europe, and there are around 4 million uh, in Poland uh, now, and there are also in all Europe, including Greece, Portugal, Spain, and, and so on. So there will be uh, Mateusz Borkowski. I hope that I will pronounce your name. Thank you so much. Uh, to, and you hold the position of product manager responsible for international cooperation in terms of introducing international railway connections. So I will give the floor to, to, uh, to uh, Alexander. Uh, Pertovsky, if he agrees, if he's here and if he can speak from Kiev. Thank you. Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. The communication is not very good, but it's okay. Great. Uh, can you see the slides, uh, the, the presentation, PowerPoint? Not yet. If it's possible to broadcast it. If not, I'll just uh, walk you to the network. Sajani, can you uh, do it? Thank you. Yes, it's great now. Alexander, you have the floor. So we have seen just, uh, just in the figures in the previous slide. Uh, okay, can we come back at the previous slides, uh, please? So, 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 we'll, so there were 3 million 8 uh, 100,000 people evacuated as to today, but now it's more than, uh, than 6.7 6 million. It was, it was uh, day, day one. And uh, for, for your information, there were around 350,000 people who left uh, Ukraine by train. The, the others um, came by, um, uh, by car or by bus uh, through the border of uh, Poland. Uh, mainly Poland, because there are other countries, uh, inclu including Russia, and, and also uh, 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 Slovakia, and, uh, and also Romania, and other countries. So next slide, please. <coughs> Alexander, can, can you continue or not? 
So I do not know this presentation, but, but you can, you, you, you can uh, read it, of course. Um, uh, so th 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 there are some rules which have been, um, which has been given to the, to the uh, population living the country by train, uh, only small bags, and also travel uh, without light to avoid shelling, and also the pets uh, allowed. And if I remember well the figures for concerning that, there were 150,000 pets uh, who um, uh, go, go through the border. Next slide, please. Alexander, are you there? Next slide, yes. So I do not know uh, this slide also, I'm sorry for that. Um, uh, so uh, the support to the cities. Next slide. Humanitarian aid, so as, as I told you, there were some trends coming from a lot of countries in Europe uh, uh, transporting humanitarian aid to, um, uh, to um, uh, to the population, but not, on, not, not, not only, as I told you also, not only humanitarian, but also materials. There, there, there was, for example, one, uh, one company who sent some lorries uh, which can go on the track and, and on the road. Um, it was, I think it was Network Rail. I don't remember exactly the, the country. I'm sorry for that if they are here around the table. Next slide. Okay, so, so there were, as you have seen in the, in the news, there were some destructions of, of some buildings, of some uh, so infrastructure in, um, uh, in, in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, and uh, each time the Ukrainian railways do, did a lot of work in order to reestablish the, uh, the traffic and the, the traffic circulation uh, in, this, uh, uh, in their country. So, so it works now, and there are, there are trends. There are, for example, two trends now from, from Odessa to the, uh, to the Polish border, and there, there, is also, there are also trends from, uh, uh, from uh, Kiev, also one or two trends per day, I do not remember, uh, to, to, to the Polish border from Kiev. And now the, the flows are going back. There are more people coming back in Ukraine than com people coming out of Ukraine. Next slide, please. Alexander. You... Yes, please. Yeah, yes, it's okay. Thank you.
Next slide, Just please. It's okay now. Okay, all right. Uh, so, so we're moving on chronologically. So after taking care of the initial <coughs> challenges of immigration, of course, the question was, uh, what about the economy? Because for the country to stay in the war, it's critically important to uh, maintain its logistics flows. Uh, I think all of you are familiar with the issue of Ukrainian uh, seaports are blocked. And uh, even until now, we had at least two ports available in the cities of Ukraine, and <coughs> as of this week, unfortunately, the last remaining uh, rail bridge towards uh, the Saradia region was uh, destroyed with the missile strike, so we completely lost access uh, for rail access to any of the country's ports. Even the last uh, ports in the Dead Hill River were not accessible uh, at the moment. Uh, the best one, uh, cross points, and having different uh, rail systems, of course, is, uh, uh, is a challenge. So uh, it, it's a topic in itself. I think some of you are probably involved in yes. dealing with this. Uh, what I should mention, this is probably a longer term uh, priority for all of us to uh, build up on this infrastructure and also to expand the uh, European uh, narrow gauge system in the Ukraine. So one of the priorities already set by our Ministry of Infrastructure is to expand uh, the network in the Ukraine deeper. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to deal with this uh, infrastructure and deploy resource shortages to overcome the logistics uh, constraints. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Yes, thank you. Next slide, and thank you for the aggregator supply. The UIC uh, Fred Department also is coordinating some actions concerning concerning that topic. Yes, please for the Iran diplomacy. Uh, this is the topic that uh, has been on the news, and uh, what we pride ourselves. And you see some of the cases, but this is just a few of the guests uh, from the government on board. It started with the first voyage of uh, three uh, prime ministers on board our train and uh, it was very symbolic uh, on one end it was a big sign of trust in the railway system that uh, we can transport, transport those kinds of our guests uh, we of course maintain uh, highest uh, security protocols uh, and uh, we believe it allows more people just to go to the capital city and meet uh, our of state or prime minister, but also see the countries, see how big is the country, see the you know, agriculture fields. Many of these guests were uh, in Ukraine for the first time, some were many times already. Uh, so it, it, to many, it gave a perspective of the country. So I think it's, but also for all of us in the rail community, uh, I think this is a good sign that world leaders traveled by rail. Hopefully, when they return to their home countries, they also. Do not switch just to the private jets or to planes or to the cars, but that they continue using the rail as a reliable source of transportation under any uh, circumstances. Thank you. Next slide. Yeah. How many slides are there? Industry players, with the suppliers, uh, and a lot of technology players, 
rail system of Europe. But here, just a few examples of uh, bridges and rail segments that were rebuilt in the record times to give connection to some of uh, the areas uh, right after they were liberated and there was a safe access for them. And uh, I'll probably invite you to scroll through a few slides as we move to the, towards the uh, last uh, segments so that we uh, are on time. Continue. Continue. Yes. Next one. Yeah, this is another few familiar faces. Uh, if you jump through them, but you've seen also uh, uh, our famous Irish singers, Bono and uh, The Edge, and the Notorious and others who are coming to, to uh, visit Ukrainian Railways uh, teams and our passengers. Uh, this uh, photograph from, from the uh, repair sites. Uh, Okay, next slide, please. Presentation is ended. It is the last one. Please go to the last one. Thank you. So I'll stop here. Uh, thank you once again to all of the partners for the collaboration. Uh, and we look forward, we understand that the world is not over, but we uh, want you to all know that we'll be open for business right now. And we need to work together, not waiting for the end of the world, but building up the economy, building up solutions for the passengers right now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Alexander, to have shared all, all this uh, all this material, which uh, I think everybody around the table here uh, what, what what you said, and uh, and uh, please take that in mind. And if you can support and help uh, the Ukrainian railways uh, to to rebuild uh, the, 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 um, uh, their network. Uh, uh, after the end of this crisis, it would be it would be great. So I, I would give the floor now to Benjamin, uh, Benjamin from uh, from from DB. Uh, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, 
I pres uh, prepared a short uh, overview of uh, the things the DP uh, tried to do to actively help in uh, doing this war and this crisis. As you, um, we'll just wait for a second until the presentation is there. It is a new one slide. Don't worry. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just wait a second. Yeah, maybe a few words from myself. I work for the Corporate Security Department. I'm currently, um, as Mark said, uh, in charge of the physical security for the buildings. Um, and from July onwards, I'll take the place of International Security Manager at the, the Corporate Security for the Deutsche Bahn. During this crisis, I mostly liaisoned with the um, federal government, the um, Ministry of Interior, and all the other related um, <clears throat> Um, federal federal agencies um, in order to mostly um, coordinate the relocation of refugees because they mostly arrived um, in three main hubs, Berlin, Hannover, and Cottbus, and from there they were uh, transported onward via train, but also a lot via bus, which is not really our core business, but um, for that moment, we needed a, um, a place where we can contact everybody uh, for, yeah, all right, there's the presentation. So on the right side, you'll see the main uh, train connections, um, mostly uh, through Poland, obviously, but the main hubs uh, of arrivals were Berlin, Hannover, and uh, uh, Cottbus. All right, so we had the Help Ukraine ticket, obviously, as Mark already mentioned, um, refugees can uh, use the trains or could use the trains uh, for free in Germany to get to their... Uh, destination, we uh, deployed a psychological team that usually is there for um, victims of um, train incidents or if there's uh, any bigger okay occasions. We have a psychological team that is deployed, but we deployed it uh, in Berlin mas ma uh, mostly to help the arriving refugees. We also had the um, Schienenbrücke, as it's called, um, where we organized the direct transport of goods um, through Poland to the Ukraine goods and supplies, water, um, baby powder, everything you need in, in such a situation. We had over 300 containers shipped and we also had over 300 trucks with DB Schenker. We um, delivered those. We also organized additional trains uh, running from Poland uh, to Germany, uh, one uh, directly from uh, Premischl. Uh, I'm sorry if the <laughs> pronunciation is wrong, but um, it went directly to Cottbus and from there we organized a lot of buses. Um, we also put up um, job advice and we put up a hotline to advise refugees arrived in Germany to help them find a job within the DB. We already started hiring a few people and we hope to uh, integrate more and more refugees in that way. And then that's already mentioned, the corporate security department, um, my colleagues and me, we organized a 24-7 um, um, coordination office um, to mostly direct the buses because there was a, in the beginning we had a lot of refugees that needed to go places and it was a very chaotic time so we needed a 24-7 coordination office that we meant, uh, yeah, every day. That's uh, basically a thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin. And I know that DB is very involved, deeply involved in the support of Ukrainian people and Ukrainian railways. And Poland also, of course, in the first line. So, Mateusz, you have the floor. Is it working? Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so uh, let's move on to the next slide, I suppose. Thank you. So since February 24th, uh, PKP Intercity has launched humanitarian, uh, humanitarian trains in cooperation with the Polish government, uh, as well as uh, also increased the number of trains between Poland and Ukraine uh, in cooperation with the uh, Ukrainian railways. Uh, thanks to help of, of our colleagues from neighboring countries, we could be able to uh, launch additional trains from Warsaw to, to Berlin and from Krakow to, to Frankfurt Oder, everything to release the occupancy of people trying to get abroad, so especially to, to uh, Germany. Uh, in cooperation with the Polish Ministry of Infrastructure, uh, the, decision, the decision was to uh, help them uh, in terms of uh, giving them the free of charge tickets uh, 
Uh, so every refugee who came to Poland uh, after uh, February 24th could travel to any destination in Poland and also beyond uh, using the economic trains. At two main stations, uh, border stations, Przemysl and Helm, uh, PKP Intercity created big coordination points uh, of the railway carriage uh, to, to provide uh, necessary help uh, when uh, those refugees try to, to like go further away uh, to, to Poland or, or uh, elsewhere. Uh, could you please turn on the next slide? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, in, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's not only our work done, it's also a cooperation with other railway, railway undertakings. Uh, so basically, we have received help in the form of the rolling stock uh, given by Czeskie Drache, by DB, Mafstadt, UBB, and SKPL. Thanks to that, we could manage the, the maintenance, we could manage the uh, number of trains within uh, Poland. Uh, you think it's working? Yeah, it's working. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, PKP Intercity cooperated with public and private railway sector uh, to, to maintain the carriage. Uh, as you can see, there are many other car uh, carriers in Poland, domestic carriers, who help us uh, in these tough times. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, to other uh, help that was provided, uh, we may stipulate that um, PKP Intensity uh, provided the translated website for, for Ukrainian people so they can, could easily find the necessary information. Uh, we've provided the uh, employees at the call centers who speak Ukrainian so they could get the easiest access to information as well. Uh, ticket inspectors with mobile devices were uh, stationed at bigger stations. Uh, it, could, it helped us in uh, releasing the occupancy of ticket counters so every refugee didn't have to like, go to a uh, ticket counter, but uh, the train inspector at the train station tried to, to find the person in need and to issue a ticket. Uh, moreover, uh, when it comes to uh, what was going on at, at the stations, uh, so at selected stations, for instance, Przemysl Główny, Warszawa Centralna, special waiting zones for women and children uh, have been provided so they could like find some shelter, uh, have a place to rest, use the toilet, uh, take a shower or receive food. Uh, in front of the um, bigger stations such as Central Railway Station in Warsaw, uh, heated tents have been uh, provided uh, where Ukrainian people could have a meal or have a drink uh, that was served to them. Uh, also, uh, additional portable toilets ha have been uh, applied there and uh, medical points as well. Uh, when it comes to the whole PKP group of cargo carriers, uh, PKP Cargo introduced a transport of humanitarian aid in the form of 352 loading wagons with uh, humanitarian aid items such as food, medicines, dressings, household chemicals, so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, PKP LHS uh, provided uh, help in the form of evacuation of passengers using their lines uh, at Hrubieszów, Zamość, Sławków and Olkusz. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, colleagues uh, from uh, from Germany and fr fr from Poland. Uh, 
So, so we see, we see that, 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 that during the, the, the crisis, how the rail uh, vital is for, for, for the populations and how the investments have to be done uh, within, within, uh, within, uh, within the railway undertakings and, uh, and infrastructures. And it has been highlighted uh, during, uh, during also the, the Refugees Task Force to, um, uh, to support the investment uh, in rail mainly in the countries uh, which are in the border of one big country in the east of Europe. So uh, I, I would like to thank very much uh, Alexander, Benjamin and Mateus for, 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 this, uh, uh, for, for this panel and we can applaud them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really, a really special um, presentation from you all, and so thank you all for your, for sharing what is well. It's quite heartwarming to see the great solidarity. So thank you very much for sharing that, and uh, and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs>